The Light Brigade is one of those games that came out with a decent amount of hype, but then disappeared for no reason. Pray for me, brother, that we may dispel the darkness with the light. And I do say no reason because this game is a ton of fun with high replayability. It's a roguelike that has power-ups and a bunch of different classes. What is not to like about this? Damn it, why did the first run have to be the sewers? The overall concept is awesome and the aesthetics of the game is top notch. I mean, you're a member of the Light Brigade. You kill horrible demon things and pray for lost souls. I feel like, I don't know, an anime, I guess? Um. Stop making spooky noises, please. There is maybe one thing that's holding it back, and I think it's the teleportation in this game. I find myself sometimes dashing in the wrong direction and getting myself lit up. So if there was just a dedicated jump button, or if the teleportation could be bound to maybe like a lower button, that way my fingers don't hit the sticks while teleporting, but I digress. Oh, I just teleported right into a bear trap. The joy of this game is to proceed through the procedurally generated levels and upgrade each class respectively. And then once you've gotten those upgrades, you go to the blacksmith or the shopkeep and buy your different things. Do I have any like, oh, I have one. I could buy a pistol. We're gonna unlock the pistol. All right. This is a full single player experience, but with a tiny bit of multiplayer crossover. Don't worry, Roger, I'll pray for your soul. And you too, foul Groth. You can run into, well, fallen soldiers on the battlefield and it has their names over there and you can pray for them. And when you pray for them, you actually get points. So there's a reason for doing it. Kind of die, that's cringe. More like, fail Groth, am I right? I always thought what would be cool for the Light Brigade is if depending on how many players died in your area, it can make the world harder or easier for you, similar to the original Demon Souls. Think world tendency for there. Maybe if the level is too hard, it spawns like a level three red guy when you're a low level and you're like, oh no, I'm a low level. But then you would just rely on your personal skill to defeat them and get the better reward. Oh, I'm just gonna stealth kill this guy. No, not the dog too! Let's talk about the classes. I believe there are about five or six in total, and they're all rewarding within their own right. You start off as a rifleman, which could be one of the best class depending on your play style. If you're someone that likes to sit back and slowly do your aim, you get rewarded for this class. And if you have no patience, you can be the pistolier with dual wielding akimbo, teleport in and rock the house. Check out this dash move. Ooh, another one right there, another dog! <laughs> Why do you make me do that? I unlock the assault class and they give you an STG-44 and that one is a classic. Probably one of the best guns in the game, but it does have a lot of kick with high firepower. What's up, dudes? Oh, I thought I killed him. That's bad, that's, that's bad. And if you're looking for a decent amount of balance, you can go for the scout who has an SMG and eventually a pistol. So it's a good, healthy balance. Ah! Well, that guy snuck up on me. Good thing I had my pistol. Not only can you get permanent upgrades for each class, but when you play, you can find different loot, like an attachment as a scope and put it on your rifle or whatever you have. These are more of like the roguelike temporary unlocks you're going to get. Heck, there's even a magic wand you can get and cast like fireballs. <gasps> The game can be pretty challenging as well, depending if you're just a run and gun or if you like to stay back. Personally, I feel like I can beat this without breaking a sweat no pat on my back deserved, but there are definitely moments where I renegated in and caught a few. Whoa, two, whoa, whoa, huh. Matrix moment. Okay, no, fail, complete fail. However, playing it again, it definitely seems like the difficulty was upscaled, so I was finding more of a challenge. Stop your bullets. I am the- Let's talk about the various enemies in the game. Currently, most of the enemies do look the same. You just have skinny tall guy, sometimes with a hat, without a hat, with a big red eye. And then there's unfortunately 
a dog slash wolf to fight. Now, I don't think I mind the quote unquote lack of variety in the enemies because they technically have different enemy types. Each enemy can have their own different type of weapon as well as be different versions of themselves. Some can have a shield, some can restore their own health, and some can even have like a bow and arrow for some reason. Dude, I just spawned and he has a bow and arrow. Okay, well, no, no, no. You take that bone arrow, and, and, what, was it, you Spongebob blowing bubbles? Okay, well, anyway. But as you progress through your runs, you will eventually run into different boss zones. And this is where the true test of your skill comes in, because there's different type of bosses. The first one I ran into was the Ice King, for lack of a better term. And I did make quick work out of him, because I found you could hide behind the pillars and whatnot. But it was really cool to have a boss fight. I have one health left. Oh God, Light Brigade! And did I mention that the game rewards you for exploring? You can get various things of loot, plus you can get these like tarot cards that give you those temporary upgrades and proving to you that it's roguelike. I don't know if I talked about the atmosphere already of the game, but it teeters on that supernatural, kind of spooky but still gives you hope and i think that's really cool my eyeballs good enough for this kinda let's let's hear it from my eyeballs and as you explore you can find some hidden things like there could be like a friendly operative that needs help that's an npc and might reward you at the end yeah. how many times can you say hmm yeah. you sound like a demon let's pray for the demon out of you let's exercise that Okay, that didn't work. Well, I tried. And then there's these other lost souls that you could still pray for that weren't other players that were like obliterated into a tree. Now, the main thing is you have to be good enough to make it to a certain checkpoint and offer your quote unquote souls up to the light deity, whatever it levels you up. But that's how you can save quote unquote your progress and level up each class. And this is where you purify all the souls you have to like kind of level up your class. It's really sweet. Because once you do level up each class, it makes it easier as you try to play as that class again. Example, you can get a pistol with the rifleman. Yeah, I'm wounded, so can I, can I shoot myself? Yeah, okay. If you haven't played the Light Brigade, I implore you to do so. It's a great single player experience, an amazing roguelike, and it has great gunplay in this. The hell is this? Is this like a lava lamp? Do I crush it? Oh. Aha! And because it's procedural, the game has great longevity where you can pick up and play whenever and feel like you're having a different experience. Especially if you're just playing as the various different classes and you don't one trick. Can they not hit me? Is he killing his friend? This is probably the easiest way to play. Oh Jesus! That one almost hit me in the face! This game is available for PC VR, Oculus Quest, as well as PlayStation VR 2. So you have no excuse for not getting it. Unless you play on Xbox and that's unfortunate. But at least you have Game Pass. Gotta keep warm. Have you played the Light Brigade yet? Let me know what you think down in the comments section. Is this a good game? Have you never heard of it? Or is it overrated? I wanna hear your opinion on it. Open that. What'd I get? <gasps> a scope already? Oh my goodness gracious, great balls of fire. We have a scope. But that's all I had for you for today. I wanted to show you the Light Brigade because it's a game that I like that is always installed in my library. And I like showing you guys games that I like that I will sometimes play when I'm not playing Bladed Sorcery. But other than that, I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by and watching today's video. A special thank you to my YouTube channel members and patrons. Thanks for supporting me, your local lunatic, so I can continue to make weird VR content. And to everyone else, thank you so much for stopping by. I'm Drifter from Downloadable Content, and I will see you next time.